Hello you aesthetically pleasing people, you, and welcome to another bewitched episode of Techspert Weekly, the weekly tech news show equivalent of a startled ferret. Actually kind of looks a bit like Nadine Durries when she's asked any kind of question at all. This week we've got big launches for Motorola, Poco and Virgin Media, as well as shock and surprise as some knob with far too much money buys expensive stuff. And after all that fun and joy, we'll be pinching our noses and wading armpit deep into a veritable bog of viewer comments. So it's an action-packed show all round. In fact, it's a lot bigger than I expected, exactly what your mum said to me last night. So enough waffle, let's crack on. Can you please serve me a jingle, sir? Techspert Weekly. Poco, they launched stuff this week and they've also got a brilliant name, haven't they? Poco, Poco, Poco. Seriously, even if you're in an absolutely bollocks mood, just say that over and over and over again and either it'll cheer you right up or eventually some fucker will bray you one or the other. Launch item number one was the Poco F4 GT, a budget-friendly game and blower bust and some crotch-thrustingly powerful specs and some pretty nifty features for a price that won't drain those valuable booze funds. The near 6.7-inch AMOLED screen is very pleasing to the peepers despite the cutout selfie cam orifice, while the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 ably handles the most memory-guzzling games out there, helped by an effective coolant system which stops the whole lot from spontaneously combusting in your hands. Battery life is pretty decent too, and you've got jazzy extras like proper pop-out triggers and the obligatory bit of LED nonsense around back. So not a bad wee package at all for 599 euros or just 499 if you get in there quick, snaffle that early bird deal. And launch item number two was the imaginatively titled Poco Watch, a super skinny smartwatch which again packs some pretty decent smarts for the low sum of just 79 euros. You've got another AMOLED display here which is bright enough to use outdoors without any serious squint in action, while the fitness features include 24 hour heart rate tracking and support for over 100 types of something called exercise which frankly looks more bother than it's worth. Sadly however that generous selection doesn't include internet porn, my own preferred method of calorie burn. And if the sign of either of those has seriously polished your truncheon, well definitely check out my full hands-on action with both the Poco Watch and the Poco F4 GT right here on the Techsperts. And also to celebrate the launch, Poco kindly sent me this in the post. It's like a, uh, a Poco light, basically. Well, it's lovely and all, but I, I can't drink it, can I? Also in a launchy kind of mood this week was our great mate Motorola, whipping off its velvet dressing gown to impress us all with a good hard look at its fresh Edge 30 flagship. This global model hits the UK in early May for 380 quid and hopes to impress with its 50 main camera tech and its 6.5 inch POLED panel with HDR10 plus support and up to 144Hz refresh, as well as its rather skinny design just like the old Edge 20. And also, not sure what's going on with this fella here, everything seems normal for the first few press photos but after that it's non-stop shots of him clutching the Edge 30 in the immediate vicinity of his own crotch. Gotta say, finding it rather difficult to concentrate just on the phone and it's not because the lad's wearing some pretty outlandish pants. Possibly Motorola's rollers attempt to sex up its flagship smartphones a bit, not really sure. Has it worked? Definitely let me know in the comments down below if you're feeling particularly aroused by that Edge 30. The rest of the specs aren't particularly trouser tickling, you've got the Snapdragon 778G+, Plus, which is basically just an overclocked 778G, backed by the 6 or 8 gigs of RAM, you've got 128 or 256 gigs of storage, and you've got a decidedly dinky 4020 milliamp hour battery, no doubt because of that slender chassis. Although the Snapdragon 778G Plus should be pretty energy efficient, just like the original 778G, so hopefully the Moto Edge 30 should still last a full day. Also this week, Virgin Media unveiled its very own Roku-style TV stream and box for its broadband customers, known simply as Stream. Bung it in a spare HDMI port on any old telly and you can dull the pain of everyday existence with your favourite shows on Netflix, Disney+, Plus, etc. with full 4K HDR support. While Stream also adds a clever bit of voice activation. And as an added incentive, Virgin is offering 10% off the cost of every service you're subscribed to, although the stream box does come with a 35 quid activation fee. And another tech story that seemed to fuel a lot of hot internet debate this week for no good reason whatsoever can be summed up in one short and pleasingly alliterative expression. Twitter twat takeover. And frankly, too much has already been said about Elon Musk wanting to buy Twitter, who really gives a sh**. But frankly, if I had $44 billion, I certainly wouldn't spend it on Twitter. No offence, Twitter. Now, I'd probably bang myself one of those awesome volcanic layers that all the James Bond baddies had back in the day, except instead of packing it full of missiles and minions, I'd just fill it to the brim with ale and then spend the rest of my days splashing around inside of it. 
Either that or I just buy an enormous rocket and use it to fire Jim's cordon directly into the sun. Tough choice. Anyway, bloody hell, that's more than enough of all of that. So let's swiftly move on to the part of the show that's permanently repeated on loop on every single channel down in hell. It's fewer comments. Fewer comments. So judging from uh, the comments last week, it seems that Google's Pixel Watch is something that a lot of people are actually looking forward to. So for instance, George says, can't wait for the Pixel smartwatch. I'm probably buying the Pixel 7 and it will be very interesting to see how the ecosystem compares to the Apple one. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, really intriguing to see if Google packs any sort of exclusive features into the watch that you can't get another Wear OS watches and also any exclusive features for any Pixel smartphone owners. I'm sure the two will pair up and do some very funky, jazzy shit. Yeah, certainly if it wants to stand out against the crowd, you know, the fossil watches and the galaxy watches and all that, it's got to do something special and certainly they wouldn't be taking this amount of time unless they had something up their sleeve. And personally, back on that James Bond vibe, a feature that I would really like in a smartwatch is just a built-in bomb. And then if you're in any kind of awkward social situation, like you bump into your ex at a party or at a wedding, you're stuck on a table with all of your racist uncles, you can just press a little side button and boom, blow the whole motherfucking room to bits. Next up, Kyron says, the thing I really want to know is, will the Rohan watch tell you where you can get some horse paste in case you get COVID? I mean, is this just a case of some seriously dodgy autocorrect or is horse paste a scientifically proven cure? And also because I obviously really need to clear this up, are we talking about paste made from horses or are we talking about the other kind? Horse paste on toast, my favorite, yum. Uh, moving swiftly on, Seth says, I've been wearing an analog watch most of my life, but I'm considering a smartwatch. I'm not an oligarch, so Apple is right out. What should I look for in a smartwatch? Well, for me, a big one is certainly battery life because I can't be hacking charging more than one thing every single ruddy night, especially after a skin fall. Let's face it, half the time I just forget to plug in my smartphone, let alone watches and other crap. That's why I do like a good watch from like some Huawei, uh, Xiaomi do, uh, some watches with good battery life, uh, Maze Fit, things like that. Also like to have an OLED screen on there, which you can get on a lot of smartwatches under 100 quid now as well if budget is an issue. It's just nice to have that always on display option so you're not constantly having to jerk your arm up in an exaggerated motion like this just to wake the bloody thing up and see what the friggin' time is and put my shoulder out a good few times that way. Because one of the most handy features of a smartwatch, for me at least, is the notification support. Not having to, you know, pull out your phone every time you want to respond to a message or delete a message or whatever. If you want dedicated notification support, you're going to have to go for Wear OS most likely. But, uh, you know, the likes of Tick Watch and stuff like that offer more reasonably priced Wear OS watches. And of course, fitness tools as well. A lot of people buy a watch based on, you know, all the exercise based shenanigans on there, which personally I can't really be having much to do with. But, you know, it depends what your level of commitment is. Do you want a watch that's going to, you know, track your stats over time, show you how much less of a flabby git you are? Or if, like me, you literally just need a watch that's going to warn you if you're about to keel over from a heart attack from one deep fried Cornish pasty binge session too many. Anyway, that could be like a whole other video. So I'll leave it there and I might actually do that video at some point. Thanks for the idea. Uh, next up, Dermot says, I'm watching your show on an S22, Galaxy S22 from Samsung. The battery lasts me a day and a half. I don't think that is too bad. Hang on, are we, t are we definitely talking about a Samsung Galaxy S22 here? A day and a half? What kind of crazy voodoo is this? So I just finished uh, testing it this week and literally I can't get a full day of battery out of this thing even if I'm really really gentle with it it's, it's always dead by like 9 10 p.m and that's with like four or five hours of screen on time bit of a spoiler alert for the full review there I mean if you're literally just using it to weigh down a stack of papers or something I can see how it could just about last over a day but apart from that Unless you happen to have the Snapdragon model rather than the Exodus, because I've heard that that's a bit better when it comes to the battery life. Still not great, because it is still a small 3,700 milliamp hour capacity cell, but um, yeah, not as woefully bad as the Exodus. Uh, Dermot continues as well. Uh, also, I have made love to Craig David. Not on a Sunday, though. It was proper bore, I tell thee. And war Craig. Um, yeah, randomly saw him about five years ago I think it was at one of the Google Pixel launches of all things and he certainly looked like he still had it in him to perform full penetration on a lady several days a week. No idea if he's still putting out the, the garage bangers or indeed if anyone still listens to garage I'm assuming so I still listen to all kinds of happy hardcore shit and everything from back in the 90s. Uh, next up Jay says hey from Ontario Canada having moved here in December last year from the UK. What? <laughs> the UK wasn't enough of a frozen tundra for you. 
Although to be fair, actually, doesn't Ontario stretch like all the way across the like, the entire height of Canada, doesn't it? So I guess it depends which bit you're in. Oh my God! Apparently, right now in Ottawa, people are celebrating Poutine Fest. I mean, that is my kind of fest right there. Look at this absolute filth, Christ! I'll bung it up here somewhere. I can get right in my face. And I never knew this. Apparently, poutine is known as Canadian salad. Fair play, Canada. You have nailed salad. Not even a hint of the green stuff. Um, but anyway, next up, Donald says, Sunderland isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Over there for a degree course, some decent boozers, and the locals aren't a hateful shower of bastards, which is nice. Yeah, I do love a night out in the town. Gotta say, I haven't been for a while, but um, at least I think I enjoy a night out in Sunderland, because it all tends to get a bit fuzzy after the second bottle of red pig. And next up, Ayo says, I am looking forward to the event that Google named after me. Yeah, that was really nice of them. You should get free tickets for that. Surely, guest of honour. Uh, he continues, I showed my dad the video of you warning me about becoming middle-aged and he pissed himself laughing and echoed your warnings about hangovers. Yeah, nature is a exceptionally cruel beast, let me tell you. That first time you have to spend all day long in bed because the night before you foolishly had a bit of red wine before dinner. <laughs> Who am I trying to kid? Red wine, me, yeah sure. What I actually meant was half a bottle of absinthe before dinner. Next up, Mike says, Greetings Uncle Spurt from Sunny Wigan. Bit of an oxymoron right there, Mike, which makes me think you're either being deeply sarcastic or you've never actually been to Wigan in your life. Uh, Mike continues, after a long day's work, I'm watching this Textbook Weekly episode whilst eating a Kebab King special and drinking Peroni. Does life get any better than this? A man of refined taste, sir, I approve. And Mike also asks, just wondering if you've watched any of the Kevin Smith He-Man reboot. I have actually, yeah, I've watched the uh, the first few episodes of it. I haven't watched the uh, the rest of it yet. Not gonna lie, after about sort of episode four or five, I had absolutely no f***ing clue what on earth was going on in any of it. Never thought I'd be that bamboozled by, you know, a kiddies TV show, but, you know, I mean, that's my mental faculties for you. They're switching off faster than viewers of a James Corden TV special. Uh, next, CF542 says, Curious to ask, do you have any siblings? If so, what do they think of you? And if not, why did your parents stop after you were born? Uh, I do have a sibling. I've got a, uh, a little sister, actually, who lives in Canada right now. And as for what she thinks of me, well, you'll have to ask her that, I guess. I mean, I'll tell you what, I will message her right now and see if we get a response before the end of the night. So if she's got any opinions she would like to share with everyone. Uh, next up, Will Hat says, wasn't Bezalus Legolas's brother? Right, you see, the mistake you've made there, mate, is that you've asked me a question about Lord of the Rings. You might as well ask me a question about tech stuff. You'll get just as nonsensical a response. I can't even remember which one Legolas was. Was that Orlando Bloom? It's been, it's been a long time since I've seen those films. Uh, moving on to something I do actually kind of uh, consume occasionally. G.J. Wright is back with some more anime recommendations. He says, Otome Game Sekai Womob Nekibi Shi Sekai Desu is quite good. It reminds me of Otome Game no hamme, hamme, flag. Hang on, is this the longest anime name of all time, or are you you're just doing this on bloody purpose, aren't you? I'm just, is this some made up? Shit? I'm calling shenanigans. This is just bollocks. I mean, I'm googling. Uh, no, no, apparently it is a thing. What what is this? Apparently the uh, the title translates in English to "My next life as a villainous colon all routes lead to doom exclamation mark." I have it. I uh, I I'll give that a go. Uh, next up, Aviation Offshore Cotton Solutions says, If you're from Sunderland as well, we must be related somewhere down the line with a name like mine, Barraclough. Yeah, it's certainly more than possible, sir. I've got about a dozen aunts and uncles and about 12 dozen cousins, so uh, there's a pretty bloody good chance. You know, if you happen to be bald and also incredibly well hung, then yeah, we're probably related. Uh, next up, Need More Coffee 92 says, As Hungary just got mentioned, I have to insert here the mandatory boi boiler a lot. Oh, God, more. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man, I, get, I, I can barely speak English, let alone other languages, so uh, this is how it's supposed to be pronounced. Boiler lado. Boiler lado. She sounds pissed again. What is it with Hungar <laughs> the Hungarian Google Translate lady? Boiler lado. She's just sitting there in the sound recording studio with a bottle of schnapps, I swear. And apparently, according to Google Translate, in English that means... Boiler for sale. Boiler for sale? All right. Well, as always, greetings to all my Hungarian chums. 
out there. And, uh, and also, if the 92 in your username, Need More Coffee 92, refers to the year you are born, then believe me, you don't need more coffee just yet. Just wait till you hit those late 30s, then you'll be sustained by coffee, mate. The old brain synapses don't even begin to spark up until I've had at least a pint of this stuff. And so that's as much time as we've got for the comments. I've actually heard back from my sister as well. Let's see what she says. Uh, she says, oh, you're just bloody brilliant. Got to say though, much like myself, she does like a drink. So chances are she's absolutely plastered as she's typing this. Anyway, a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Been fantastic reading through those as always. Please do smash your comments down below. And unfortunately, next week we won't be able to smash through as many of those as possible because I'm actually going to take a short break from the Textbook Weeklies because dun dun dun, after two long years being cooped up in these four walls due to our great mate COVID, I am actually finally fulfilling my dream of getting out of here and getting blind stinking drunk in an entirely different country. So there won't be a show next week, probably not the week after either, depending on how crazy things get. Uh, but certainly you smash your comments down below and we will cover those all again in the grand return in about sort of two, three weeks time. I do, however, have lots more hot tech shenanigans lined up for the next week or two. So definitely stay tuned for more on that. Have yourselves a bloody wonderful week or so and be lovely to each other. And I will see you all later. Love you.